This is the latest big battery smartphone from Motorola. Now, the Moto G10 Power offers the same guts as the Moto E7 Plus. However, you do get slightly better features such as a USB Type-C port, fast charging, more cameras, and of course, a better design. It's time to find out if the Moto G10 Power is worth buying. Hi, I'm Royden, you're watching Gadgets360, and this is my review of the Motorola Moto G10 Power. Now, before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and also hit that bell icon so you're the first to know whenever we have a new video. The design of a budget phone is usually a lower priority for manufacturers, but on the Moto G10 Power, I think Motorola has done a pretty decent job. It looks much better than the Moto E7 Plus thanks to the diagonal 3D texture on the back, similar to what we saw on the Narzo 30A. Now, the body is built entirely from sturdy plastic, and this Aurora grey colour that I have hides fingerprints pretty well. In the front, we have a 6.5-inch HD Plus display which looks unmistakably low-budget. Jacket edges on icons, thick bezels and slight colour banding in some wallpapers are a constant reminder of this. The viewing angles aren't the best either, however, sunlight legibility was surprisingly decent. Videos don't look great on this display, but it's serviceable. Now let's talk about specs. The Moto G10 Power uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 460 SoC which is modestly powerful but certainly not the best in this segment. However, Motorola has tried to make up for this in a way by offering an official IP52 rating for water resistance and dual-band Wi-Fi. It's available in a single variant with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. When it comes to software, Motorola has always offered a clean Android experience and this continues. The Moto G10 Power runs a near-stock version of Android 11 along with a few tweaks along the way. For instance, there's an adaptive performance toggle in the settings app which claims to help launch your frequently used apps quicker. The Moto app offers all the usual shortcuts and gestures which we're used to seeing on Motorola phones. Now coming to performance, there's no real way to break this gently but the fact of the matter is that Android 11 just doesn't feel too snappy on this phone. You need to be a little more patient when multitasking, opening system menus or apps due to this underpowered SoC. Now, once you make your peace with it, it's not so bad. The lack of any bloatware is always refreshing and I didn't really encounter any ads or spammy notifications during my week-long review period. Motorola has struck the best balance in my opinion between offering a near-stock Android experience and some creature comforts such as gaming mode which I think others could learn from. The Moto G10 Power doesn't heat up during regular use, but the back gets mildly warm when gaming for long stretches. Speaking of which, simple titles such as Xenowork ran just fine, but heavier games such as Call of Duty Mobile will have to be played with lower graphics settings for a better gameplay experience. Now let's come to the piece de resistance of the Moto G10 Power and one of the main reasons you would actually consider buying this at this price, the battery life. The 6000 mAh battery easily lasted two full days on one charge, and this was with rigorous use too. If you're not a heavy user, you should be able to go well beyond that. Now, charging speeds are decent for this battery capacity. You can expect roughly a 54% charge in an hour, but charging it fully still takes close to two hours. The Moto G10 Power also ran for a little over 25 hours in our HD video loop test, which is pretty good. Moving on to the camera, we have a 48 megapixel primary, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel depth, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. I honestly like the camera module design too, as it doesn't really protrude outward too much. Now, on the front, you get an 8 megapixel selfie camera. Speaking of the performance of the rear cameras, the primary one is something you'll want to be using most often as it captures the best images out of the lot. Daylight shots were decent with good HDR details and colors. Close-ups looked good too and thanks to minimal shutter lag, it was possible to get sharp photos of moving objects as well. The ultra-wide angle camera is a nice addition which is missing from the Moto E7 Plus. Image quality is slightly weaker compared to the main camera but it's definitely usable under good light. The depth camera works well as portrait shots looked very good with a pleasing bokeh quality. The macro camera is subpar even under good light. 
Now, in low light situations, the main camera captures much softer details. Night mode helps fix the exposure, but not so much with improving the details. Now, you can't use night modes for the ultra wide angle camera, so image quality is typically poor. The front camera works pretty well during the day, but low light quality is very weak. There is night mode for the selfie camera, but it didn't seem to help much here either. Now coming to videos, the Moto G10 Power can shoot up to 1080p 60fps. You do get stabilization for the main camera and the ultra wide cameras, provided recording is at 30fps. Video quality is good during the day, but there is a noticeable drop in quality when you're shooting at night. The Moto G10 Power has a lot of good things to offer at its asking price of 9,999 rupees. It looks good, has excellent battery life, fast charging, there's near stock Android, and the main camera is quite competent during the day. Some areas which could have been better are the display and of course the low light camera performance. Compared to the Moto E7 Plus, the Moto G10 Power offers better battery life and faster charging. However, if you are looking for better gaming performance and you don't really want to spend much more money, then you should consider the Realme Narzo 30A. So that's been it for my review of the Motorola Moto G10 Power. Let me know what you think about this smartphone in the comments below. And as always, for all things tech, log on to Gadgets360.com.